Oh, we're ready for it, so let's go with our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, and this time a lake that millions literally have been trying to unlock for over half a century. Legendary Lake Gunnersville, the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite, just completed down there, and everyone knows pretty much the story of that tournament. It was all about Caleb Kufall all the time, absolutely dominant, a wire-to-wire -wire victory and finishing 17 pounds clear of the rest of the field. But there are so many stories, and we'll focus on the top four today. Ronnie Moore, of course, standing by, approaching the screen of knowledge as we speak right now. Let's talk about what you want to start on, Ronnie. I, I think this is a very intriguing playing field. Lake Gunnersville, one that we visited quite a bit, 26 times in Bassmaster history. We've had almost 10 Elite Series events, a couple classics as well. And it's always won in different areas, even though the same notorious areas factor every single event. We have the notorious places always putting out fish, but where it is won is quite different every year. And we see these red highlights. That's basically the last six times we've been there where it's been one. We see the two bridges down at the south end of the lake, Spring Creek 2014 Classic, Browns Creek 2020 Classic, and that's February and March time period. Now we come up to where the Elite Series was uh, in April, and this was one in Town Creek. Seabold also factored in this tournament. And then we go to a more recent time period uh, for where we are now, June of 2019, Jamie Hartman getting it done near that Miracle Mile portion of Gunnersville, right above Goose Pond. We start to see some of those mats on the main lake. And then we remember last fall, even farther up the river, Frank Talley won uh, doing his deal on Gunnersville. And when you see the four anglers, Caleb Kufal, Jason Christie, Wes Logan, and Greg Hackney all in this region of the lake, that is because grass became the factor. May and June, the grass is really plush, a lot of different types of grass, and that has been a big impact on how this fishery does in the summer. In fact, it's been a late spring here, cooler temperatures leading up to this, yet the grass, as it happens sometimes on Gunnersville, was actually ahead of schedule. It was, and that has changed the bite. We know this place is a notoriously deep ledge fishing, and May, June is when it really starts up, but to see it get one near grass shallow, that just shows how dynamic this fishery can be, that you can find an offshore, offshore school of fish, or you can get around the grass and live there all tournament long. We saw milfoil, we saw eelgrass, a lot of different characteristics that are different with those. Milfoil clumps up, you can pitch in holes. Eelgrass more so the same length and, and tops out at the same depth, and you can do moving baits around that. That is the key. We saw a lot of anglers with the shad spawn trying to cover vast fields of eelgrass and getting it done early in the morning. But when that sun got up, we started to see those mat punchers, those lily pad fishermen, those milfoil anglers as well start to rise to the top. Yeah, of course, Gunnersville always known as terrific because it's a place where you can pick your poison, choose your strength, and fish that way. It just turned out that the proper poison this time around was absolutely, as you say, Ronnie, grass. It is very intriguing to think one angler can lead wire to wire an event and be as dominant as he was on two stretches, two very small stretches, but the characteristics of his milfoil field right there by Goose Pond, as well as the mats that he was selecting right there below the BB Comer Bridge. For Caleb Kufal to dominate four days of this event and win by over 17 pounds, I mean, he unlocked the lake better than anyone. Come here, buddy. Ah! I got him. Yeah, boy. Woo! <laughs> That's what we needed. Yes. Boom. That'll get you excited. Just incredible. We couldn't believe what we were watching there. That performance, and, and he did fall off the pace on, on day number two, but he did not lose his lead. And that was due to wind, which sort of uh, made him noisier with his trolling motor and everything like that. Got the mats a little compressed, and so he couldn't really fish the way he wanted to. When that wind was gone, yes. he went to town. Yeah, and his milfoil area really produced a lot of weight. And on day two, he needed his backup area, the mat punch-in deal by BB Comer to really help him out and it didn't, but then we were doubting him. Is he gonna do well on day three? He ended up doing well indeed. And Wes Logan, in that same region, we saw him have an uptick in this event into the weekend. Day three and day four, he really started to catch him much better. Bringing a lot of momentum in from his uh, win at the previous event on Neely Henry. And Wes Logan actually uh, gave credit to Caleb Kufal for proving to him, and he proved it in no uncertain terms, that you could get it done in this situation. Yeah, he was the day three leader last year and gave it up. But hey, confidence in an area is confidence indeed. Uh, made a little move, 
from where I was fishing this morning. Uh, I actually saw some fish around here in practice. Uh, more a little bit shallow around. It's a big one. If it don't come off, like a big, big one. Come on, baby. Freaking hand on it. There's your update. <laughs> Boy, two great tournaments in a row for Wes Logan. You can see in the background right there, Caleb Kufal and Wes Logan said that, hey, I'm gonna leave you alone, but if I need to get a bite or two, I'm gonna come visit you, and he did. But a guy who really never got visited, Greg Hackney, went far reaches, more north than most other anglers did, and he had all of this grass, all of this cover to himself so he could swim jig, he could frog, and he could flip to his pleasure. Well, that's what our colleague Mark Zona says is always a big component of a victory at Gunnersville, being left alone, doing what you're great at. Get in here. Get Well, it's like our colleague Mark Zona has always said, one of the big components to winning at Gunnersville is being left by yourself to a certain extent as much as you can be and doing what you're great at. And when you see visuals like that, you could be anywhere in the country, but it screams Greg Hackney's wheelhouse, frogging, yes. flipping, vegetation for an entire event. And Greg really wanted to get away from a lot of anglers, so he went farther north than most, and he had all of this area to himself. And another guy who really doesn't like to fish around other people, but he had to switch up his tactics because of the pressured water, Jason Christie. He liked to frog in the morning, that was really key for him, but then he actually picked up a spinning rod and a weightless wacky worm to get his job done. Come out of there. Just hook around a little pad. Maybe the heavy weight is the deal. Can I tell you how much I love frog fishing? Super steady throughout this tournament, yet explosive in most all of our tournaments this year, Ronnie Moore. Your guy, Jason Christie, with a frog. He loves frogging, but he really did switch it up. Got out of his comfort zone a little bit, spinning rod for a lot of his weight, and it just shows you how dynamic you can be at Lake Gunnersville. Great tournament for those four guys we just looked at right there. Gunnersville never fails to impress us beyond belief, and that is your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. <laughs>